Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. Welcome to the cabin. I'm back from the reseller rally and I've got some pretty good sales. I was pretty excited to see even on time away mode, we were having some sales, which is really cool. And I saw a message the other day from a buddy of mine and he's like, look, eBay's asking for help. And I thought, oh, that's a great title for a video. eBay asking resellers for help. It'll It'll trigger the people that are mad at eBay and it'll interest the people that aren't and we've had some pretty good sales like i said but i want to talk about today what exactly ebay is asking some resellers to do because a lot of you may not know i want to talk about that i want to talk about some sales and a bunch of other stuff we got going on let's go take a look I don't normally talk about this kind of stuff at the beginning of a video, but I have not announced this on the Commonwealth Flipper channel yet, and they're going to be sold out before I do if I don't act quick. Matter of fact, they might be sold out already. We sold 72. I announced on Instagram on whatnot, and we sold 72 so far. There are 28 still available of the Inman Macho Inman Q4 stickers over on CommonwealthPicker.com, and we finally get, got these back in. You know, a lot of people have been asking about those. Those have been out of stock for a long time. We have about 90 left at this point. So I thought I'd mention those two things today. But I pulled out my hat bin because I wanted you to see that we did remove some. It was just like mounded over. We got rid of about 10, 15% maybe of the hats. Not a ton. But we took them and put them back in there. We're going to sell them off in lots. And it's been working so far, at least for me, at least for my mind where we're relisting stuff and what you know like i said i don't suggest it for everybody out there but for us it was necessary for multiple reasons to do this and i am pretty happy so far we've sold a lot of things that have been sitting around for a long long time not necessarily high dollar things but things that have been around for a while and we're getting some money back out of them and a hat is one of them i pulled it out earlier i think the next video might talk about harley a little bit by the way had something else interesting happen. This hat right here sold for $15 plus shipping. I paid $2. That's a decent little profit. Oh, hey, that reminds me. I'm going to announce the winner for this in just a second. I was a little worried with the Bears football season being as poor as it is that this Bears Devin Hester jersey wouldn't sell for a while. But it did. It sold for $70. We did free shipping on it. Ran it for $10. Really good little profit. We're gonna do one more sale and then announce the winner for the eBay gift card. And well, I'll let you wait for a little surprise a little later here. This item right here is a polo tie. I just dug it out from the bottom of this bin right here. And it has been listed forever, just forever. And I could have delisted it like I did to, like I said, probably 15%, 20% of the items in the store. And it was listed at $14 plus shipping because it is it has a tag on it. I'm like, you know what? It's going to sell. We just need to drop the price on this, retitle it, and bang, sold just like that. Now, it didn't sell for much. sold for $9 plus shipping. But it did sell, and we didn't have to donate it or get rid of it or sell it on another platform or anything. So I'm pretty happy that at least we made some money off of it. About two episodes ago, we did something I... we. I stole this idea from Leroy, Blood, Sweat, and Sell, over there on the Reseller Information Network. He said something that I just kind of struck a chord with me. He's like, give it a hashtag gift. Well, I don't know if he said this, but he was talking about stopping giving gift cards to the competitor, right? And we talk about Amazon and other places like that. He's like, you know, we all sell on eBay. We sell on these other platforms. He's like, give people ebay gift cards for christmas instead of an amazon gift card for christmas and it's something we've talked about before and i was like you know what that's not a bad idea and i thought maybe we could start the hashtag give an ebay gift card for christmas of course my buddy jake yakov Ben's over there check him out he does a live show i think he still does it every week don't you jake and he said you know he sent me a message he said or hanukkah <laughs> so this time we're gonna do that for jake so give an eBay gift card for Hanukkah. Put that in the comics, comments below and we're going to give away a $25 eBay gift card next, at, well, probably two episodes from now is when we'll give it out. So there you go, Jake. You happy? I hope you win. <laughs> any rate, you didn't win this one though. And who did win this one? Lisa Golden 
523 won this one. So send me an email, commonwealthpicker at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to send this one off to you. And we're going to give away this one right here. I thought it was a great idea. So I went down to CVS. There's a list. You can Google it where you can buy these things. And, you know, maybe we get a few first-time buyers on eBay. You know, we talk about more sellers, more sellers. The data actually doesn't sell, say that, believe it or not. And with what I'm going to talk about in a second, there may be even fewer sellers in the future. But one thing we can all agree on is more buyers on eBay is a good thing for us folks who resell. So Lisa, congratulations to you. And you know, if you got social media, spread that hashtag around. We'll see what we can do. People accused me in the last couple of weeks, you know, in the videos I did for selling out for eBay. And, uh, and we know there's issues, right? But yeah. I'll sell out for eBay. I'll sell out. Look, this benefits all of us, and there's a lot of good feedback. So, Lisa, congrats. I'd also say if you're a Poshmark seller or Mercari, do they do gift cards over there? Somebody tell me in the comments. Maybe do the same over there if you sell on those platforms. Speaking of things that haven't sold for a while that have picked up tremendously since we've done this relisting and all that, I think, I don't know. I'm going to have to figure these sizes out. Sold a pink Petra shirt, not vintage. Although it's getting close at this point for this particular kind. There are plenty of vintage ones out there. And if we sold a gray one too, I'll have to get the sizes right. I think it's an XL gray. I don't see an XL gray. This one maybe. Nope, that's not it either. It's got to be that one. It's the only gray one left. Better be anyways, unless I have the sizes wrong. I think it might be a large. Yeah, that's it. So that Petra shirt, this Petra shirt, same buyer. They bought it on two separate days, but we're still combining shipping for them because that one snuck in. I think it's about $27 plus shipping on those. We're into them for, a, I think, either a quarter or 50 cents each. Here is the topic that I want to talk about right here. eBay on eBay Main Street is asking us to do something for them. And this is one of the things that I talked about is we need to find a place, places where our common interests lie and begin to work together there. And then in different places where our interests don't necessarily line up, we can at least have a conversation, especially with things that are really real concerns for resellers out there. You guys talk about them all the time. And I think this is a, a overall, it's a good thing. And it's never going to be perfect, and there's no doubt that there are certain things that need to change, not from our end, but from their end. But this is something I thought, you know what, this is the kind of thing we need to do more often, and they do it from time to time. But to be honest with you, in my opinion, eBay doesn't have the biggest microphone to get some of this stuff out there. And a lot of folks on social media and you guys out there could do it as well. This isn't exactly one of the topics that I think is the most important, but... I do think it's important and I want to talk about it. I don't often go to eBay Main Street, but my buddy John from Flippin' Ain't Easy actually pointed this out to me the other day and I thought, okay, cool, and I'm going to go check it out. U.S. 1099K federal tax reporting burdens on casual sellers. eBay believes millions of American Americans casually selling things online shouldn't receive unnecessary, invasive, and confusing tax forms. And when you click on that link over there, there's got two little options here. It says, share your story. We need your help to stop over taxation and the unnecessary disclosure of private information, which the private information part was part of the Informed Consumer Act, which is just kind of doubling down on it in, in different ways for your disclosing, you know, your your social security number, because if they're going to do this, you know, eBay's got to collect all this data in order to process these 1099. So that's the part of it. Share your story about the importance of online selling, and then you can click share your story. Next one right underneath that is contact Congress, which is some of the things I was talking about, not in relation to 1099, but in relations to some of the other things that may be coming down the pike or some of the things in the past like the Informed Consumer Act. Tell Congress to stop requiring unnecessary tax reporting and protect seller privacy. And then you can contact Congress. Now you got the button, you can go on there and contact Congress. Then you can scroll down and there's a little video talking about it. And then do you, and then a little article here. Do you occasionally sell things from your garage or closet on eBay? Starting in 2022, the IRS wants to put those transactions under a microscope. Obviously, that's a long time ago, right? So they put it on delay this year. We'll talk about that in a second. Previously, only major 
sellers com completing hundreds of transactions and totaling tens of thousands of dollars would have their transactions automatically reported. Now, even a single sale over 600, the new reporting threshold could land you with a burdensome 1099K tax form. And the change does not take into account the millions of individuals selling used or pre-owned items where there is no taxable event. This change is meaning their own personal possessions that they paid up for, obviously, and they're selling it at a loss almost all the time, not buying it like a lot of us do and selling it. This change is part of a provision act, blah, blah, blah. eBay believes that dropping the minimum threshold to 600 for issuing a 1099K will cause confusion over reporting of non-taxable income. That is absolutely true because people don't understand it. We'll talk about that. At, I'm probably not going to talk about it at full length for sure. And privacy concerns for millions of Americans already struggling as a result of the pandemic. So you see, this is an older article that they've put on here. So eBay, if you're listening, you need to update that because we're fighting this fight again. It, I don't know if it was fought last time hard or not, but it didn't happen. And so it's coming up now in the coming year. And we'll see if it happens again. I've got my thoughts on that, but I'll save them for a second. I thought it was interesting that they attached a couple articles to this. One's got Taylor Swift in it. I'll give you a brief little reading of it. Looks like there's soon to be some bad blood between the federal government and ticket resellers. Those Taylor Swift tickets they sold for high prices, ridiculously high prices, they'll soon have to pay back a portion to the internal revenue system. A new tax regulation, this was written just a couple weeks ago, states that anyone who received over $600 from companies like Venmo, Cash App, Ticketmaster, or StubHub will now have to report those earnings to the IRS. The American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 lowered IRS reporting thresholds for all commerce platforms, including, and it goes on to talk about that kind of stuff. Remember I redid and lowered the price for Elmo the other day? Well, we sold the other one for $13, $12.95 plus shipping so the older stuff is continuing to move really happy as we well we're not heading to q4 we are in q4 so don't forget that your ebay coupon is available for you to order your ebay stuff if that's what you'd like to do so go check that out so let's talk about this a little bit more here for a second and we're going to get into the rest of the sales as well first separate from the 1099 thing just the fact that you know ebay and they have done this often ebay is asking for resellers help in something like this. That is something I think they should do on a much, much bigger scale. And maybe, you know, having better relationships with their own sellers, which I think we all agree across the board needs to happen. I'm seeing little signs maybe that it's starting to happen. I don't think any, I think there's a majority of people out there that won't ever be pleased with it whatsoever, but I get it. Um, so I think that's a good thing. But and this issue is kind of debatable. There's actually a lot of resellers on the fence about an issue like this. And let me explain what I mean. So this is really, it's not protecting me. It's not protecting most of you who are selling, you know, a decent volume. You know, if you're selling, let's say, $50,000 worth of stuff, this is already occurring. This is already occurring. And so in some ways, if this thing dropped to $600, it would actually protect the seller's who are already doing it this way and it's already happening. I've been doing this forever. Matter of fact, I don't even need a 1099 because I'm an LLC and I have to, an S Corp and I have to do things a certain way regardless of the 1099. So if the threshold truly did lower to 600, which I got to say, I have my doubts. I really have my doubts, but that's a side issue at this point. Maybe we'll talk about, talk about it on a later episode. But if that threshold really did drop to 600, there would be a ton of people who would stop selling very casual, low-end sellers. I don't mean low-end necessarily, but low-volume sellers would stop doing it because they would have that burden of having to keep track of all that stuff. So they're not paying taxes on a gross number. They're paying taxes on a net number. So there are a lot of resellers out there who are selling six figures or whatever. Like, like we sell over six figures on eBay who would like this thing to come through to limit the casual seller from selling, which obviously gives the bigger sellers more of an opportunity to sell. Or maybe I should say sell without as much competition. However, I want you to, if, you, if that's you, if you're in that camp, I want you to think about something else for a second as well. This ice cream maker, I don't know what it sold for. What did it sell for? $21. 
and we dropped the price, retitled it, and it sold. Like, let me give you an example. So my son, my oldest son, Bubba, his name's not Bubba, he's a very casual seller. I think last year he sold around $1,500 worth of stuff. All that is his personal stuff. He's not going out and buying stuff to resell it. It's personal stuff over the years that he's bought and he's selling. There's no taxable income there. There's none. There's a loss. But he still has to get the... T if this would go through, he'd still have to get the 1099. You got to go through the process of your deductions and all the stuff that goes with it. It's just this hurdle. And so for him, having that hurdle, it just becomes not really worth it. Or you try to sell the things on different platforms to stay under the $600 threshold so you don't have to do it. That's not really worth it either. So that's the kind of thing you're thinking about. And that ironically is... It's kind of why I think that this $600 number just is just not going to happen because once you get down to that level, there's not that much taxes. There's not that much in taxes to collect, especially if people are doing it right. So uh, the IRS has to process all this stuff. And for what? Because nothing's coming in. Because if my son had to go through that, there's no taxable income there, but they still have to go through the process of doing it. So does eBay, by the way. And that adds massive cost to them. So eBay wants that number to be as high as possible. The IRS wants that number to be at a point on the lower side where they're going to start to collect all actual taxable income. That, that number is nowhere near 600, in my opinion. That number needs to go way up before it becomes worth the while of IRS itself to be doing this process. So I don't think, this is my opinion, and I don't have any inside information, but I don't think that number is going to be 600. It might stay where it's at right now. It might be, you know, 10,000. It might be 5,000. At any point, that number goes up is going to reduce the cost that eBay has in the processing of these 1099s, which is why they're asking us for our help to push this out and say, hey, don't do this. So for those of you who wouldn't mind if something like that happened because you're already doing what we're, what we're doing, paying our taxes, doing all the accounting. Shout out my reseller genie, by the way. We'll talk about that later. I would just say also that, yes, you would probably limit the competition of very casual resellers. However, there's an added cost to eBay, a significant added cost to eBay to process. I mean, how many sellers sell just five or six things a year or two or three or 12 or 18 or whatever? There's a ton of them, and to be able to have to collect that data, process that information for the IRS is costly. So I don't think that this is going to be something that they want to do because of the added cost to them. But in our case, is a double-edged sword. There's a benefit with less sellers, but there is also added cost to eBay for doing this, which they have to pass on in some way, shape, or form, and we all know just like us with shipping. When shipping prices go up, do you eat the cost? You know, we pass it on to the buyer, at least most of it. So same thing would happen here. eBay would pass that cost on to create more revenue, to, to pay for the expense of this 1099 being so, in my opinion, ridiculously low. Back in the hat bin, I pulled it back out again. That American Eagle sold for $17. Now it might've been free shipping, actually. Paid a buck, 17 free shipping. I just realized I didn't read a thank you for the ice cream maker. I was watching your YouTube channel and saw the ice cream maker. I was looking for similar ones on Amazon yesterday, but couldn't decide which ice cream maker to get. And there it was. Thanks. So that's just something else. You know, we talk about that all the time. I try every single time I can get something on eBay instead of another site, especially if I know I can get that item from an everyday type reseller out there. I go on there and buy it. And I know so many people who don't. eBay resellers who won't buy on eBay, they buy on Amazon, which is crazy to me. But, and somebody actually mentioned this at the reseller rally to me. They said, hey, you know, think about that for a second. You know, that may be an issue. Why don't you buy from eBay? And sometimes we talk about the relationship between eBay and its sellers. That may be part of the reason. So, hey, eBay, if you're listening out there, you know, the better relationships you have with your sellers, and I do hope they're improving. You know, eBay sellers are also eBay buyers. 
And that is a big factor that nobody ever talks about. And I think that's important. Haven't sold one of the Z28 keychains in a while. Happy they're back in selling. I think they sell for like $15.95. They're free shipping and we're in them for next to nothing. So back to this for a second. I do wonder from time to time, I've often spoken about it on this show. What kind of an effect could all of us as resellers with one voice really do. And in my opinion, most of you out there listening probably have not seen eBay Main, Main Street, seen this out there at all, but we have such an incredible community across social networks that this is the kind of thing it's intriguing to me. While I'm not like overly concerned about this particular issue like I am about the others I've spoken about, I'm kind of tempted here to to do this. So I'm actually in the camp of I certainly don't want it at 600. The number needs to go way up, in my opinion, because there's just tons of added burden for a ton of people. But more importantly here, in our case, as sellers that are selling at a higher volume, if you are out there, um, added cost to eBay. And then, of course, it gets passed on to us. So, at any rate, I'm going to go on there and do this. I'm going to go on the, do, there and do this. If you're in that camp... Why don't you do it as well and just see, just, I don't know, we'll see, we'll try it. If you're a social media creator out there, maybe if you're not, if you're just on social media, maybe we push this thing out there and just see what happens. Maybe if you want to do that, I'll leave the link to the eBay Main Street story in the description or somebody else can leave it in the comments, I suppose, because I might forget. Memphis Starbucks mug. These have been listed for a while. And we decided we'd lower the price a couple of bucks and kind of retitle them a little bit and maybe even adjust a picture or something. And they sold. This one sold anyways. And we sold two more right after it. So this one sold for $10 plus shipping. I paid a dollar. And it was actually bought by Joy, who I just saw at the reseller rally. And so thank you, Joy. We appreciate you. I hope you had a good time there. And it's Joy, the Joy. Let's see if I get this right. Joy of Flipping. All one word is the name of the eBay store. You're also over on Instagram. Sold an item that I did not, I, I guess I could have just taken it off entirely because it doesn't really meet really what we want to do because it's a $4.95 plus shipping item on this Mary Kay Salon Select Plum. I don't even know what it is. Salon Direct. Long wearing nail enamel. And we just redid it and just adjusted it a dollar down. And it sold for $4.95 plus shipping. So I'm glad I didn't just remove this one because they don't take up a lot of space. You know, I don't mind selling low dollar items that I got dirt cheap. I bought a whole box of this stuff for like five bucks. And so I don't mind selling stuff like this super cheap because it's very, very little room, very easy to ship, very low cost, about $4.95 plus shipping. I've got to go in and grab something really quick about I just had a thought come to my mind and I thought I'd ask you guys, tell me what you think out there. Do you think it's going to really drop to 600 this year? Do you think it's not going to drop at all? They'll just delay it again. Do you think it will ever drop that low? Tell me your opinion below. I always love to learn and, and get different perspectives on stuff. I've kind of given you my perspective, but I'll, I'd love to hear yours out there as well. But there is one thing I can certainly tell you, but I'm going to grab this item first and then tell you in a minute. While I'm out there barking. This is just a little 8-track case that I got in a massive bulk buy. So we're into it for pennies. Sold for $12.50 plus shipping. And I just noticed this one went to a viewer, went to Katrina. And they talk about, they used to buy things from me in the past. I do remember you from Colorado. Now they live in Southwest Virginia. JCat VMAC is the name of their eBay store. And they, she says she enjoys the podcast. Wow. <laughs> There's, you're the one out there, right? So Katrina, I appreciate it. I hope you enjoy that eight track case very much. So I wanted to say this before I moved on, because I got to get through these sales, because I got to go tur pick Turner up here from baseball practice. So I, you've heard me talk about my reseller genie before, and especially at the end of last year when it looked like, because it was really delayed, this announcement didn't come on delaying the $600, $1099. Look, if you're in this business very casually and you're just having fun or whatever, and that number goes up, you know, you don't necessarily have to focus on it as much because you're not going to be paying taxes on it if you're, you know, you wouldn't have to pay taxes on it. Legally wouldn't have to because you're going to have so many deductions that it wouldn't really matter. However, if you get that 1099, then you have to prove it all. 
You got to prove all those deductions. You have to prove cost of goods. You got to prove all that, you know, mileage, all that stuff. Because in reality, you could have a much bigger gross number than 600, much bigger, and not pay any taxes if you're doing everything legally that you're supposed to do, but you have to keep track of this stuff. And so I used to do it manually. I went and did it GoDaddy. And when, when GoDaddy went down, I went and sought out somebody and I found my reseller genie. They didn't find me. I found them because I think it's important to have this kind of a service dedicated to resellers specifically. And I just for full disclosure here, they are a sponsor of me on occasion when we go to these events and they've sponsored these events for us. And we do have an affiliate link, but I will tell you this, and I've told them this. I, if it wasn't a dime, if I didn't get a dime for this, I would still advocate, not just for my reseller genie, but for all the methods that are out there. If you're trying to ramp this thing up, it's clear that you need to come up with a system. You need to know your numbers. You need to automate as much as possible because these are burdensome things. I used to absolutely dread tax time. I hated it because I knew I didn't do all the things I was supposed to be doing. And I think it's important. So tell me in the comments below what you use. Tell me in the comments below if you're happy with what you do, if you do it manually, if you do a spreadsheet, if you use a bookkeeper, if you do whatever. If you're on my reseller genie, by the way, Code Commonwealth, go check them out as we head into the tax season. You won't regret it. You import all kinds of stuff and the, and the service is getting better and better and better all the time. They're constantly adding new integrations from different platforms and the two of them, Faith and Paul, are just amazing, good people. So there you go. It's not really a commercial for them, but because of this topic here, I just want to remind folks of that as we go into the... I guess we're not in the tax season yet, but this stuff's coming up. There is always a link in the video description or over at commonwealthpair.com in the affiliate link section. And I get a little portion if you do sign up and you get a discount, 15% off your first month. Florida mug, a little alligator, and a Washington DC mug. This sold really quickly after the other mugs and they were sold separately, but sold to the same person. They sold for $19. Plus shipping. Sold a Sally Christmas ornament. Where'd you come from? Sally Christmas ornament my wife got on 90% off last Christmas. I believe that's what we got it for anyways. And so we got it super cheap and it was from Walmart clearance. And she sold this one. I don't remember what this one sold for. 15 bucks free shipping. So still not bad because we got it so cheap. It's not going to stand up. Sold another NWO bandana. These only go for 10 bucks, but multi-quantity, so it's definitely worth it to me. I am going to head out to the other shed here because I cannot find a plush. And I think it's recently listed, but it's a Harry Potter plush sold for $12 plus shipping. And I'm going to come look in here and see if I can find it. If I can't, I can't. All right, definitely not in here. Definitely not in here. I did not take pictures of this thing, so... I don't know where the heck it is. I'm going to have to go search through. There's two more plush bins that it might be in, but this is a fairly small one. So, wish me luck. I know a lot of you are saying, skew system, Kevin, skew system. <laughs> I'm going to choose to ignore you. That one looks like it might be a job for my wife to find because she says I have man eyes. I did find this plush, though. I started to look back there, and then I realized it was up here. Sockums, I don't know what they're called. Per tenders. How you doing, Mama? Matt Cadu bought this one. He says, keep up the good work. Just sold for $9. It was a pretty cool little vintage plush. So another Cutco item. This one was a pretty good little sale. It is a Cutco bread knife, $17.24. Sold for $82. Plus shipping. Sold another plush back here. This is uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. And that one right there, I don't even know what the heck that thing's called, to be honest with you. Let me see what the name of this one is. Marionette Puppet Plush. And it sold for $14.24 plus shipping. Sold a single stitch. I am Father Hear Me Roar Vintage Taz T-shirt. And that was part of our massive T-shirt buy not too long ago. And that one sold for $22 plus shipping. All right, y'all, we got Reagan here with some sales out of commonwealthpair.com. But before she tells you what it is, don't forget, 
that well I'm not even sure there's gonna be some left y'all they've been selling like absolutely crazy but you can go check and the comma picker bags are back in stock there should be some of those left for sure those don't sell quite as quick <laughs> any rate Wallen's happy to see you all right what'd you get uh Catherine and Paul got an anime man sticker sticker no or anime uh -uh. Animal man Animal and Animal Parker man. got a CWP sticker. CWP Hi. sticker. Hi. <laughs> wow, man. How you doing, bud? <laughs> anyway, thank you, Ray. Bye, and don't forget to get your sticker at CommonwealthPicker.com. Turner's in here for some Commonwealth comedy, and I forgot a shirt that my wife told me I needed to go grab. So, Tommy Bahama, double XL, 100% silk shirt. And that one sold for $15. Plus shipping. <laughs> Turner's got some Commonwealth comedy. What do you got? How did dog catchers get paid? How did dog catchers get paid? I don't know how. By the pound. By the pound. <laughs> I like that one. I want you to know I found the Harry Potter. It was wedged back down there in the corner. All right, y'all, don't forget, if you want to go over there and fill that out and contact your congressman about that issue, if you're passionate about it, some of you may be, some of you may not be, go ahead and do that. Leave your opinions below as well, as long as they're nice. Well, that would have to be too nice, just not rude. <laughs> any rate, thank y'all, and don't forget, hashtag give an eBay gift card for Hanukkah, for Jake out there. <laughs> and good luck to y'all out there. We appreciate you very much. I am going to talk about... The reseller rally, the St. Jude auction. I'll give you a little tidbit here. So we're still finalizing a couple things because there was tips that came in, not just on what not to be donated, but I even saw one, uh, Des, Des Hardy did it on Garage Sale Nation channel. So the initial donation, but then we're adding to it and giving more. And it was an incredible success thanks to so many people out there. And I want to talk about that. I also want to talk about the trailer. A lot of people ask it a lot of questions. I'm going to give you my vision, my plan, and the strategy to make it profitable. And we'll talk about that in the next episode as well, as well as a few thank yous for the reseller rally. You guys are just amazing to me. So many folks out there, and I appreciate it greatly. And I appreciate my wife's help. She was a tremendous help and is every day with this stuff. So anyway, thank you all for joining us, and I can't wait to see you next time. <laughs>